everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I was not expecting to have enough packages for a mailbag, but then I had gotten some stuff in from China and some other stuff, so let's just do one. Uh, in fact, I'll probably do them out of order and send this one first so you guys can see some of my channel update type things. Uh, these are, oh, chip resistors. This is a uh, an SMD resistor pack. I like that it comes on this little clip here. Um, I have been organizing my stuff. I just got done organizing all of my logic ICs and things like that. And uh, I decided to buy one of these packages, I think 20 values each of uh, SMD resistors. These are 1206, 1%, 60 values, 20 pieces each. Um, you know, there's just been times lately, like I already need 20 of a certain value SMD resistors. And uh, you know, you can get them cheap from China and all that stuff, but if you have to buy them in small quantities, they can get pretty expensive. So what I decided to do was to buy sort of a sampling of them like this and then um, make it so that, you know, as I run out of these things, I can uh, order more in the quantities that I actually need. So um, I'm doing a lot better about organizing my stuff. I'll be doing a video about organizing my uh, logic chips and stuff like that. I've learned some valuable lessons that I want to share with you guys. Um, so those are some SMD resistors. Uh, this could even be more. Who knows? I think I ordered two sets of them. Um, this one is, yeah, I don't know what those are. Uh, let's see. So these are 7404 logic chips, which are in all kinds of things. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking about logic chips coming up because there's some really cool things about them. But, um, you know, I had drawers of random chips that weren't organized or anything like that. And uh, I started organizing them. So right now I can come onto my phone and see that in terms of 7404, I had some, I had some, uh, I had two of one style and one of another one and one of another one and uh, four of another one. You know, there's little differences that may or may not matter. So I've been recording them all separately and also grouping them all as generic 7404. So this looks like about 15 or 20 chips here uh, in this awesome clear anti-static bag. I'm sure there's no problem at all with that. Uh, but I got these relatively cheap and these are good to have on hand, especially now that I know where to find them. Next up, we'll do an Amazon one, then we'll go back to China. This is, ah, these are some cables. So it's really funny. Uh, in a previous mailbag, I had just ordered uh, some of the ones that I think had 10 pins. And then I immediately needed ones that have 12 or whatever that is. Yeah, 12 pins. So these are for an upcoming project that I'm doing called the RGB uh, 2 HDMI. And I do have the connectors to make my own, but they're so dang cheap if you buy them uh, in bulk like this. And I need 10 of them, so I might as well go ahead and get this as a five pack. And in fact, I can just cut them in half and I will have 10 of these cables. So nothing too exciting, but I'm really excited for the project that goes with them. Let's grab this one here. This is from, uh, this seems like one of those combined packages from China. So my address could be anywhere in here. So I'm going to be ready to cover. Feels like chips. Oh, no, it is sockets. These are, let's take a look at these. Uh, these are, I ordered the wrong sockets in another mailbag, which may or may not come after this. But these are 40 pin. I think these are 40 pin double row sockets. So um, these could actually be for several different things. They would work as IDE headers uh, on the back of like a drive or something like that. They would also work as the female headers that would go into a Raspberry Pi or something like that. So there's um, a lot of uses for these in different projects. I'm going to be doing some Raspberry Pi stuff. And uh, you know, if you ever want to make a Raspberry Pi hat or something like that, which I might be making a Raspberry Pi hat, um, then you're going to want these double headers because they just align a lot better. So uh, I think these are 40 pin double row headers and it looks like there's maybe 20 or 30 of them on there because I actually do need a bunch of them. Next up, we've got another item here and this one is, ah, okay. So there should be two of these. This is one of those things. I don't know if you guys have ordered off AliExpress recently, but if you order one of them, it's free shipping. And if you order two of them, it's like $12 for shipping. So it was way cheaper to order two of these separately. Um, but these are um, cables that have a DIN on them and that makes them for a lot of TI-99s and 
Commodore 64s and VIC 20s and all that kind of stuff. Now you have to be careful when you plug them in because some of these DIN connectors put out 12 volts, five volts, and you don't want to accidentally put that in the TV. So the first time you plug it in, you need to sit there and measure and figure out, you know, what your pinout is. But I think these are designed for the VIC 20, which makes them safe for, um, for most things. I think they're gonna be fine for like the TI-99, VIC-20, stuff like that. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if I see another one of these coming up. Um, but essentially, I should say this, I've been basically hacking together my own things. Like this is the same as an old IBM keyboard. So I've been hacking up those connectors and soldering these things on the end. And, and you know, I never know if the problem is my weird connection or the cable or my pinout or whatever. So with this, I have a good solid, uh, I mean, pr obviously not the highest quality, but a decent quality pre-made wire that I can use to get myself testing. So let's open this one. Oh, this one feels dense. Let's see, I don't know what that is. Let's stick that off to the side. This is, come on. These are, oh, these are um, edge connectors. So let's look at these. So these are 44 and 12 pin edge connectors. And uh, I'm not gonna rip them all out of the package. I'll take one out, but you know, picture one being twice the size. Uh, these are the edge connectors that like, you know, a cartridge game or something like that would go in. So this is the one I think for an Atari. And then the other one, I think this might be for a Commodore 64. But um, these edge connectors can be used for sort of retrofitting things on old computers. And they were really cheap. I wound up getting a set of, I think, five of each of them. So there's five of the 22s and five of the 12s. Um, I got them from China just really cheap. So I know um, the Retro Chip Tester has a thing for testing uh, Commodore cartridges and maybe Atari cartridges too. But the idea is you can plug a cartridge into this and, uh, and just do cool things with it. So these were cheap, so I picked them up. I'm guessing this is the other cable. Again, it's so funny. If they would have just put it together, I could have, uh, you know, paid once and they could have shipped once, but instead they shipped me two of them. And that's it in the China package. Um, let's go with, I'm going to grab this for a second. This is just, I had this on my desk here, so I figured I'd show you guys. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these. This is a, a single board computer before the Raspberry Pi was known as the single board computer. This is actually a Pentium 3, I believe 866 megahertz with 256 megs of RAM, onboard IDE, onboard floppy, serial, I'm guessing parallel and game, uh, onboard clock, cache module, dual ethernet and only a single ps2 port which is a little annoying um but this is an entire computer on a single board but you'll notice it has a slot edge and i was going to get out both multiples i have multiples of these but um this is a uh, a backplane not a motherboard but a backplane and the idea is that you can get these in all different configurations like you can get them with isa slots with 8-bit slots 16-bit slots and various numbers of all these things and you plug this single computer in here and you can hook up way more things than you normally could to a normal computer. As you can see, this one's got uh, AT style power. Uh, I've got ones that my other one has an ATX style power. Um, you know, there's some headers up here if you need to supply extra power and stuff like that. But these things are just extremely flexible yet super simple. There's really not a ton to go bad. A couple uh, bridge type chips up here, but not a lot going on on these things. So uh, this is, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with this, but this is a single board computer that I picked up along the way for basically nothing. And uh, I may use it for some retro stuff. I may send it up the road, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys. Um, I need your help, actually. We're gonna grab something else. I got some other weird things that I wanna see if you guys can help me identify. So I picked up all these things plus a Raspberry Pi Zero for a dollar at the flea market. Um, and I don't know what the stuff is for. The only thing I'm thinking is that maybe it was used in some kind of mining operation or something like that. Um, there's a Raspberry Pi PoE hat. Uh, for all the Raspberry Pi stuff I've done, I've never used a PoE hat. Uh, can't really give you much advice on that. I have other ways to PoE one of these things. So uh, I've never really used one of those, um, but these are kind of weird. So we've got a USB to, what would that be? Uh, mini B, mini, <clears throat> we've got a USB to 
mini PCIe, uh, mini PCIe to USB, uh, two of these things, different styles. This one's got an SD card, maybe a, a SIM card. This one's got a SIM card on it, and this just has the regular adapter. Oh, and uh, I think that's a, that might be a SIM card also. So what would you do with a USB that has a SIM card and a mini PCIe um, slot. What would that be used for? I have not a clue. Um, on top of that, this is a similar one with USB 3, except it had dual eight megabyte compact, not compact flash, SD cards in it. So you've got USB 3 to M SATA with two eight gig compact flash cards in one. And then this is what made me think is for mining. Uh, this is a, uh, looks like an M.2 to a PCI Express connector. So just very weird stuff. What would that be used for? And uh, what would I do with it? Is there any use for the stuff? The other thing is I was wondering if any of you guys have messed around with PIC. Um, these things aren't cheap on eBay, but uh, this is, I've always heard of the PIC microcontroller. I know other countries use them in place of Arduino in their school system, South Africa specifically. Um, but this is called the PIC kit and uh, programming microcontrollers by pick are not super easy and so um this little kit is supposed to make that job a lot easier and uh i have no idea if it does but i just thought it was kind of an interesting device so i picked it up another thing i got in uh these same bundles of stuff is uh the radio shack pcb etching kit now i have no idea if the acid is still good or anything like that but it's got a copper pcb and i have a couple more and it's got these stickers and uh, some instructions and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to try hand etching a PVC or PB PCB, um, you know, just see compared to ordering from PCB way what that process is like. So that'd be kind of fun. Um, speaking of PCB way, I don't normally do unboxings of their stuff and they're not sponsoring this video, but uh, I've got some various PCBs here that I thought, yeah, just give you a quick channel update to show you what I've been up to. So this is a relatively hefty order from PCB Way. Um, this will be sponsored eventually, but it's not right now. Um, this is um, 10, I believe. I'll say there are 10. There are 10 PCBs for the Tandy 1000 EX and HX. I, I may have shown these on a channel before, um, but these are, I think these are black. Yeah, they're black. And um, they are made to give you an extra 512 megs of RAM, a serial port, and uh, what else? A uh, compact flash. That's part of the reason why I needed those headers. A compact flash um, adapter, XTIDE, on the old, like, 1987 Tandy 1000 EX and HX. And those were, well, just big selling machines, and there's a lot of them out there. And I've got one of each, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to uh, use this card, which would upgrade that about as high as you could possibly upgrade that particular computer. So I thought that'd be kind of fun if you're into Tandy, even if you're not, like just kind of cool. I wanted to learn about how it all works. And then I also had them print these things, which are basically custom slot covers that go on the back of the card and uh, allow the RS-232 port and compact flash to go through. So, well, you know, we got a sponsor. Uh, let's let them do that cool stuff. This uh, is kind of bigger than, did I get a pen? I got a pen, yes, I'm moving up the uh, chain and I was able to finally get a pen uh, from PCB Way. Um, let's open this up here. This is something that I've never done before, but I'm excited to try it. And I'm guessing I gotta slip through the middle. I'm gonna open this carefully because I do not wanna bend it. Is a solder stencil uh, and you can barely see it. And the fact that you can barely see it is one of the reasons why I want it. Um, these are for soldering very tiny surface mount chips, uh, which I have never done by hand. And so I want to try doing it with some solder paste and a stencil. Um, so I'm pretty excited to try that. And the thing that that's going to get used on is this, which I'm not going to open these right now. Um, I wonder why they padded these and not the other ones. So these are RGB to HDMI boards. And the idea with these things is they uh, allow you to by putting this on top of Raspberry Pi, connect old computers and game systems and things like that to modern HDMI monitors. And they use very tiny surface mount components. These things are gonna be a pretty big challenge for me. So I'm uh, excited to try the solder, st solder, 
solder stencil and uh, all that stuff. So uh, this is a future video coming out. And then while I'm here, I've got this one here. This is uh, the Atari and Commodore joystick tester. So a little simple PCB for testing joysticks. So I'll do a video about that. And uh, I think that's gonna be kind of fun. I'm excited. And we got one more to open. Oh, goodness. Totally forgot. I ordered this this morning and I totally forgot about it. This is a uh, two terabyte 970 Evo Plus uh, NVMe SSD. My computer is full and I backed up a lot of stuff to the server, but I just work with some giant uh, websites and web projects and stuff like that in addition to the videos I make for the channel. And so I need to keep a fair amount of stuff on my computer at any one time. And uh, a lot of my web stuff, I don't want to move it around to different folders. I just want to expand the storage that I have. So I went with the 970 Evo Plus uh, from Amazon and very, very good reviews on this thing. So uh, I'm cloning my drive right now and I will be putting the uh, this in and swapping out my old one. So anyway, the 970 Evo Plus. And I've got one more thing here. I'm not going to get into this a lot. I just unboxed this uh, a couple minutes ago, but this is um, the Kiwi's HT280D. Now they did not just offer me this meter. I specifically asked for it and kind of the premise is I'm trying to figure out if this can be, uh, if I was only going to own one meter, would this work for that? So I'm going to be actually using this as my solo meter for the next two weeks. I'm going to be traveling with it. I'm going to be doing AC and DC and residential and automotive and all that kind of stuff and just see how this thing works in the field. So um, anyway, that is all my stuff. A lot of this stuff won't have links, but uh, you know, some of the stuff will have links in the description and it always helps a lot when you guys um, use those links and follow through on that. That helps the advertisers know that you know, I'm actually doing something it helps me know even most importantly that you guys like the products that I'm putting on here. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a great day and uh, thanks for watching.